What happened? Thank you all for coming tonight. Uh, I'm Wayne Feiden. I'm Director of Planning Sustainability for Northampton. I just want to give you some quick background. I'm going to turn over to our consultants to take it from there. But we, we last looked at downtown zoning many years ago. We tinkered over the years. We did lots of changes. We've looked at the Central District Architecture Standards, again, tinkering over the years, but not really making dramatic changes in a long time. Um, and so it's just it's time to come back and look at the zoning again. So the main reason for this forum is just to hear your thoughts about what works and what doesn't work, how, how do we want to move forward in the process. Since we last did the zoning, we have a much greater emphasis on what we require private building owners, people who are building new buildings, what changes we require that they make to our public streets, sidewalks, street trees, those kinds of things. So our zoning doesn't really go into a lot of detail about those things, so we want to revisit that. Um, lots of things have changed. When we first, the Central Business District is about twice the size it was when we first uh, passed design standards. So design standards and zoning, they were built around sort of the old historic Main Street, now covers some distance up King Street and some distance down Pleasant Street. And it may or may not make sense for to have the same standards for the entire district. So we hired Dobson and Flinker to sort of help us through this process. Um, and so I'm going to turn it over to them and let, so Peter Flinker can let him talk you through the process. All right. Thanks. Yeah, I'm Peter Flinker. This is uh, Dylan Sussman, who's one of our associates. And one of our partners on the project is Ted Brogans, who's hiding back here behind him. So what we're going to do tonight in uh, true workshop fashion is we're going to have a little introductory discussion of why we're here and what we're after. Then we're going to break into two or three uh, groups. So we can hear more directly from you and look at the maps and really drill down into sort of what's working well, what needs to be fixed, and some of these similar kinds of questions. Uh, so I wanted to start because this is, uh, tonight's meeting is sort of uh, midway and a couple of years of work that we've been doing, not to rewrite the zoning from scratch, but as we say, to really do a, a tune-up of the regulations as needed. Uh, as Wayne said, They've been in place for a long time. Uh, for many years, there wasn't a lot of development happening, so there wasn't really a need to make major changes. And now we see that development is picking up again. Um, and it sort of feels like the right time to think, do we need to make adjustments? Yes. And also, as I'll show you, there's a lot of things going on in the world that are affecting retail, the success of retail outlets, sure. the future of housing, and that uh, so the timeline is basically we're starting out with the process of um, talking to people both in downtown Northampton and we're doing a parallel project for downtown Florence and we're having this public forum tonight and in Florence we're doing a public forum on the 30th. Uh, after that we're going to take the input that we get and uh, work with staff on translating that to whatever draft regulatory changes might be appropriate. We're not sure what that will amount to. Um, but that is going to include a lot of feedback going into the winter and into the following spring before anything is brought forward. So some of the forces, as you know, you know the, the face of retail is changing rapidly in the last 10 years. Um, so we don't really know what the competition from Amazon, other internet retailers, is really going to do. But we know that it's having an immediate effect on a lot of retailers who can um, you know, who don't need to see people face to face, while the ones that do need to see people face to face are probably going to be, continue to be the most successful. Uh, we also have issues of sort of, we sort of categorize these as social distress issues, homelessness, um, opioid addiction, mental health issues, which are particularly noticeable in the downtown because that's where people gather. And uh, a certain number of those people are struggling. And so the question as, with so many other aspects of what the city is talking about the last few years have to do with how we appropriate balance the, the need to accommodate people of all kinds and all abilities in the downtown areas, but still make it a great place to do business for people to come and feel safe. So that's a question we're sort of having on an ongoing basis. And then there's issues of regional competition. 30 years ago, I think when a lot of us 
started to move to Northampton, uh, it was unique. And now it's perhaps not as unique as it used to be. East Hampton is coming along. There's a lot of artists and interesting um, people moving to East Hampton and uh, Greenfield and other, and Holyoke and other cities that have sort of started to redevelop and rediscover themselves. And so Northampton, and you know, the prices have continued to go up. The rents for office or retail space are higher than perhaps other communities. And so that's, that's having an interesting effect. And then the housing, I won't call it a crisis, but statewide there's a housing shortage of, what is it, something 50,000, 60,000 units that are needed right now today, and that's only growing. And that's um, an opportunity to have more people living in our downtown areas, but it also raises the question of how do we want those to be designed? How do we want people to fit in? So the, you can't see that small map. Maybe the bigger map on the board here is easier to see. So the, the, the project area basically is comprised of the, the central business district, the gateway business district, or the, what is it, the entrance, entrance way business district, and to the south uh, from Conn Street up north on Pleasant Street, the general business district. And that corresponds to the zoning map here where you see the, the darker pinks on the north and south of this map are the general business to the south and the entrance business to the north. And then the rest of it is the central business district. So what we did last year is, is basically looked at the existing zoning and translated that into a more graphic format. Uh, it's basically following, you, you may have heard, uh, the idea of a form-based code, which a lot of towns are moving toward. And a lot of what makes a form-based code work is that it's very graphic and visually based. So you don't have to read hundreds of pages of text. You can look at diagrams and understand how buildings should fit on a lot, as shown in these diagrams, what the setbacks should be, what the required heights should be, and so on. In the central business district, these setback requirements are very minimal. Um, in fact, there's a build-to zone within zero to five feet of the um, the property line in the front, there's a maximum building height of 70 feet, but also a minimum building height of 30 feet. So the idea is to encourage people <coughs> to build taller buildings that are not just one story, uh, sort of strip malls. And a big part of the central business um, and the reason for the existence of the central business architecture committee is to maintain the, the sort of character by matching new buildings to the character of neighboring buildings. So the current zoning has, uh, by reference, I guess, a set of design guidelines that were done, what, 20 years ago or so? And so we've also taken those design guidelines and tried to translate those into a more visual format. And they basically are designed to uh, replicate the buildings that have been there for 150 years or more, uh, basically analyzing those buildings. And you notice that they're sort of traditional ground level retail space, there's a cap with a decorative cornice, and then between, you know, three, four, five stories of neatly arranged windows. And the arrangement of those windows is covered in much detail by the guidelines. And one of the things we discovered, in fact, that if you strictly follow those guidelines, it's kind of hard to replicate a lot of the buildings that we know and love on Main Street. And so I think, I assume that's another big task of the central architecture committee is trying to help people see their way through uh, those different guidelines and, and find the right balance. Another sort of interesting aspect of, of the guidelines was dividing different buildings into a sort of a typology that calls some of them in green are one of those, the theme buildings. So basically the theme buildings were considered those that represent the bulk of sort of traditional architecture along Mount Main Street. So those are in the, the darker green. And then there are a series of landmark buildings in blue. Uh, there are, let's see, and then transitional buildings around the outside. And so the idea is to maintain the theme buildings, which you see are concentrated along Main Street and Pleasant Street, to infill where there's anomaly buildings, if those come up for uh, redevelopment, with more theme buildings and to gradually 
consolidate with <coughs> sort of traditional character. Is that sort of a decent way of describing what that's about? <laughs> well, we could talk more about that later. Better than I could do. <laughs> <laughs> um, on the entranceway bu business district, uh, there's a maximum building height of 65 feet and a minimum of 20. Again, this is that northern area that's entering the uh, King Street from the north. Um, and, and again, relatively few other requirements other than that. Um, but there is parking requirement, but only on the rear or side and not in front of the buildings. So if we look at a comparison of the three districts, I'm sorry you can't read all this, but basically in terms of architectural design, the Central Business District has the strongest uh, architectural standards. Um, in terms of the public realm, there's a very narrow build-to zone, so you're basically required to put the buildings up in, against the street in the Central Business District, but there's more flexibility to setting the buildings back in the entrance way business district and the general business district. Uh, residential is allowed in all three districts above the first floor, and in the central business district, it's actually allowed on the first floor, floor, but it has to be 20 feet behind the front facade. So you have sort of a liner of active retail uses. And then uh, the biggest difference, of course, is parking is required in the entrance district and the general district, but not at all in the central business district. So one of the things we did when we started is uh, measure all of the sidewalks in the downtown and put together a series of diagrams, sort of dividing these into the typical sidewalk zones. So as you can see here, there's a three-way zone in the middle. There's a frontage zone, which is that area up against the building, which is needed for door swing and awnings and, and other uses. And then there's a furnishing zone where you typically have the trees and the planters and the benches, and then a utility zone next to the curb. And so we looked at the different areas. So this is Main Street, which has quite a wide um, furniture zone and throughway zone. On Pleasant Street, they're both quite narrow, and there's not really room for a separate furnishing zone. It's just everything is sort of crammed into that sidewalk strip. And on the side streets, there's a variety of uh, different approaches, but basically there's usually a grass sort of vegetation, a utility zone, and the throughway zone of the sidewalk. So if you look at the whole downtown, we can characterize the different sidewalks uh, in green along Main Street is sort of a wide sidewalk. On Pleasant Street is a narrow sidewalk. And then as you go on the side streets, there's a distinctly separate kind of sidewalk. Um, so as we know, the whole downtown is fairly walkable, but it has very different characters and design standards. So right now, there's no clear guidance in the zoning for how to design the sidewalk in front of your building. So mostly that's a process of negotiation with the, the city staff and, and committees as to what happens. So one of the goals of this is to take this survey um, and sort of consolidate where it makes sense into a few uh, typical conditions for each of those street types. So this is sort of the narrow side of, of uh, Main Street, probably near um, Fitzwillies. And this probably fairly tall buildings and a fairly narrow sidewalk setback. And what we've done is sort of suggest here different public realm zones with the center one being the Main Street sort of primary zone, secondary zones on Pleasant Street, and then side streets have their own zone, and then the entranceway in the general business district. So basically four different kinds of sidewalk types. So we want to get your feedback on this later on. And so these diagrams basically are a way of illustrating uh, for future zoning documents, perhaps, how this all fits together. So the idea, the idea is, rather than a building owner or developer sort of scratching their head trying to figure out what the city wants, you have clear standards for each of the sidewalk types. And as you see here, they're divided into sort of color-coded uh, areas. So this is zooming in on one of the sidewalks on Main Street so that we have a sort of a three-way zone with a minimum width so people can always walk. Uh, we have an area for cafe seating in the sort of frontage zone next to the building. And then also, as you move on the opposite side of the sidewalk, we have other zones that could be used for a variety of purposes, for furnishings and utilities. And then even in the, in the parking area, 
where the parking space is now, we could have more flexibility for different uses within that area, potentially. And then looking at the secondary main streets on Pleasant Street, where you have a narrow cross-section, even though we don't have as much room, we can still establish sort of clear guidelines for each of these zones, so it's always possible to walk easily, but you also can accommodate outdoor signage and displays and a few cafe tables, perhaps, and then have room for new street trees and uh, benches, if that's appropriate. And then looking at the side streets, there's an opportunity to also incorporate small gardens and cafe spaces that might be on uh, private, private land, but also want to be sort of pulled into this uh, typology. <coughs> and then looking at the gateway district, where we want to maintain flow for cars, we want to maintain the parking areas on site. Uh, behind the buildings or next to the buildings. We really want a better guidance for how to design that, that strip along the street. The idea being that you shouldn't ever, as you do now, sort of walk to the end of the street and then suddenly you're out in sort of automobile land, right? Because then people will turn around and go back. The idea is to make it easy to walk from one business to another and also for people to live in the outlying residential districts to walk into the downtown and have a pleasant experience. So. I'm not going to go through a lot more detail, but um, along with sort of separating the sidewalk spaces as public realm into a series of separate elements, we want to drill down and provide guidance for how to plant street trees, um, how to do cafe seating. You can see here that cafe seating might be next to the building. It might be out in the sort of shared utility or furnishing zone, but we want to maintain that throughway so that people can walk. So what this really does is it, it hopefully it provides for flexibility in the way people approach these different elements, but also provides clear guidance that no matter what you do, you can't block the sidewalk. You have to maintain a certain area. And if somebody gets an idea of, I'd really like to plant a tree outside my business, there's clear guidance for how to do that. So one of the questions we want to talk about tonight is what's appropriate in terms of additional development or redevelopment on these different downtown streets. So for instance, this is looking at sort of the wider portion of Main Street. Um, and the buildings as they are now are typically you know, three and four stories. There's a few that are five stories. But this is actually what the zoning currently allows, which is up to 70 feet, which could be five or six stories, depending on the height of those different elements. <coughs> So on the main street, if we look at this from a design perspective, even though you possibly could add those additional stories, you're not changing the sort of level of enclosure of the street. You don't get, it would loom up a little bit more than it does now, but overall you would still have a good slice of sky to look up at, if you will. But the question that we want to talk about tonight is, you know, how do we sort of calibrate that? Should it be should it be 70 feet? Um, and if we live it at 70 feet, perhaps we should require a setback of the upper stories so that you don't get quite as much of that sense of looming over the sidewalk. And then, particularly on Pleasant Street, you'll notice there's quite a narrow setback between the different buildings. This is what it looks like today, and then that's what it look, could look like with the 70-foot buildings. So quite a dramatic distance difference there. So the, the level of enclosure is proportion is much greater when the street existing street is narrower. So that might be again an area that if we do allow extra stories above, you require them to set them back at some formula. And then this is the sort of the general business or the entrance district. That's adding, going up to 70 feet, and that's with setbacks. So that's one question we want to talk about tonight, is sort of the, the scale and height and density of the buildings. And then the other one is the design of the buildings themselves. Right now in the Central Business District, everything is covered by uh, the design guidelines, which basically ask people to create historical-looking buildings that are based on the traditional principles that have 
you find if you look at the buildings that are there today. But what we're seeing around Massachusetts and, and the Northeast in general is a lot of infill development that doesn't look very historical. In Amherst, for example, um, there's Kendrick Place, which is on the bottom of this, which is like a five or, I guess it's a five-story building, but it's right on the sidewalk of Triangle Street. If you've gone over there, you can see it's quite dramatic. And, there's, and it's of a fairly contemporary design also, so it's kind of a stark look on the street. And then at the top is Bolt, Boltwood Place, I believe, which is in the, behind the main street in Boltwood Walk, but it's a very contemporary building. Uh, so the question is, that, is that appropriate um, in Northampton, either behind or is it not appropriate at all? Um, and we're seeing sort of a changing market and, and sort of creative approaches to mixed-use buildings around the state. This is a, a project in Watertown, which is pretty typical, where it's an apartment building which is set back with parking underneath, but along the street frontage, there's a couple of retail spaces. So you, you have a sense of active uses on the sidewalk, and it steps up in height as it goes away from the street with apartments in the back, which is kind of an interesting approach. In Blueback Square in Hartford, or West Hartford, um, they basically created a whole neighborhood from scratch with quite large buildings connected to parking garages, uh, where you have I mean, this is, that could be built in the central business district in Northampton right now in terms of the, the massing of those buildings. And then a, a certain part of the residential market is sort of focused on building very sort of blocky buildings. It's kind of taking the economy of scale, uh, which is good in terms of keeping the price down of an individual apartment, but not so good in terms of the character that results perhaps. And then there's all kinds of approaches to very contemporary buildings in Boston and elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So the question is, is this kind of thing appropriate anywhere in Northampton? Um, so we're going to talk about the, the scale and massing of buildings. We're going to talk about architectural character. And then the last thing is really thinking about the character of the public space or the public realm between the buildings. And uh, right now, Northampton is got a pretty beautiful downtown. A lot of things are working well. So we want to talk about that. But we also want to talk about you know, what other communities are doing around the state and perhaps what could enhance the success of uh, Northampton. This is in Somerville, a completely new project, which looks like a traditional downtown because they've taken all of those elements and replicated them. Uh, the very nice wide sidewalks with a lot of signage that's not just pasted up against the building, but sticking out of the building so you can see it as you walk down the sidewalk. There's a lot of planters and vegetation, particularly hiding the parking areas. And then there's shared streets that you can drive on, but also have more of a pedestrian character with lighting and so on. Um, in places like Saratoga Springs, they really specialize in sidewalk life. I mean, it's a big summer community. Sort of, it's different than Northampton. But what they've done is uh, essentially privatized a lot of the sidewalk space for outdoor cafes that are managed by the individual businesses. So as you walk down, there's a lot of, not a lot of leftover space. There's a sort of the throughway where you can walk. There's a lot of private cafe spaces. And then the rest of it, they've planted heavily with uh, planters filled with flowers and trees. So that's, that's another approach to the, the public realm. And then around the country, they're retrofitting areas like, you know, like King Street as, as malls. This is essentially turning the center of the street into a, a boulevard, putting one-way traffic on each side and then using the center for parking and then closing it off for festivals. And then the idea of uh, essentially extending the pedestrian paving across the whole street cross section, not just having pretty sidewalks in an ordinary street, but really redesigning the whole street to incorporate some of these elements. And then again in West Hartford, uh, even though it's fairly uh, new, some of these areas, a lot of attention to traditional detailing, uh, particularly with getting trees to grow, which is something that hasn't always been successful in downtown Northampton and Florence. So how do we, how do we incorporate these elements that really add, literally add life to the street? And then Middletown, Connecticut, they've really been working to enliven the downtown with artworks on the walls, a lot of planting, again, private, semi-private cafe spaces, 
and really letting the businesses come out onto the street. Um, so even though it takes some of that space away from people walking, it adds a lot to the, the activity there. And then Portsmouth and other coastal communities, they've taken a very sort of historically based approach to the streetscape with brick and granite and traditional elements. So that's a possibility. So we're going to start with a few general questions. Um, the first of which is, what's your general response to this work that's, uh, that we've been working on to date? Do you think it makes sense to take this approach? Do you think the existing zoning is working well um, or, or not? I can start with you guys. <laughs> when, will the, um, when will this be implemented? Has it been written up or is this the first charrette, basically? Well, we, basically the first step was to take what's already in place and develop that into a sort of a draft form-based code, essentially. And so the draft exists, but it hasn't really been calibrated with the public input that we're looking for now. So sometime this winter? Okay. Yeah, I think one of the things that um, needs to be pointed out is that your zoning guidelines uh, really direct a private investment, uh, give it a, t a sort of a framework. You sort of create the shell and invite the animal to move into it. Uh, but a lot of the things that you've shown here uh, are indicative of private, or rather public investment uh, in streetscape elements, landscaping, other kinds of things like that. Mm -hmm. So that goes beyond the mere zoning ordinance. So I think to have the combination of the two things uh, is really essential. And so I think what you pointed out are a lot of great examples of what can be done, but zoning alone is not going to do that. So you need that combination. Well, that's one of the things you do see typically with a form-based code is it right. sort of treats everything as sort of one entity. It right. doesn't really care whether it's public or private, but let's create some clear standards for both. Well, it becomes a question of who pays for it. Right. And I think that has to be built into it. Uh, Wayne, you want to address that? Sure. So this is our Central Business Architecture Committee. So, oh, one of, so we have various stakeholders involved. We obviously want the public involved. On the regulatory side, we have the planning board with Central Business Architecture. Um, so there are a lot of players and a lot of stakeholders. So the nature of any change is it's a big consensus building process. Right. Ultimately, and and have, do they participate in this group as well, those yes. other stakeholders? So it's a combined committee from all those different entities? So the point of the state of this meeting here is to hear from everyone, to hear from you guys, to hear from them, we'll be meeting the planning board, and so ultimately it's city council who has to act. But yeah. that's what we're trying to get the city people involved as well. Can I ask you one, one more clarifying sure. question? The last time I attended a design meeting, it was a design charrette that was run to look at, which hasn't been addressed in this project, and if it's not incorporated, I think we're missing something work that the planning board, I think, contracted for on redesigning Main Street so that you don't have six lanes of cars, mm -hmm. which is, in essence, what we have right now. So, so, so you all know what this is. The city had, uh, we just opened public recently for a redesign of all Main Street, <coughs> thinking about narrowing the lanes, thinking about what goes there. That's a, that's a very slow process, so where it's probably literally a four or five year design effort, maybe 10 years before it gets implemented. But it had a lot of implications because so a lot of the best designs incorporate some of the elements from this proposal. Right. So, so the two processes have to talk to each other, but they all have separate processes, and this is going to go a lot faster. So that's a much slower process. So okay. they, they're each going to inform each other. And well, and it doesn't preclude the other either, which I would see as an enormous enhancement no matter what happens. That's right. It's time to see how it's All right. Thank you. Sorry. Yes, this may be a follow-up. Do you... I'm not clear. Do you have a vision at all of what Northampton might look like, how it might be different in, let's say, 20 years? Or are you just going where the, the advice takes you? <laughs> I think the first step is to try to understand what the trends are. 
which is why you know those models showing the existing zoning, usually people will do what you tell them to do, assuming the market can support it. And so the most likely thing is buildings are going to get bigger. If there's new buildings, they're going to be infilled according to sort of traditional principles. And so that's that's sort of the first step is to understand. But the reason we're here tonight is to really ask you what your vision is and to try to think collectively is is the vision for Northampton that's more of the same? Um, because one of the things we've heard already is that's a really precious um, resource. You know, it's something you couldn't recreate in, in you know, financially or otherwise today. And it's a th one of the things which makes Northampton unique is this wonderful downtown. And how many buildings? A hundred really interesting, unique buildings. And so that's one vision would be to put that in some kind of a bubble and only enhance it, certainly not detract from it. Another vision which some people might have is to try to create something that's more appropriate, perhaps for uses that we don't even know yet. So how do we does that mean more contemporary architecture, a different form of building? Uh, and then the, I think the other question is, do we have a lot more housing downtown? What should that look like? And where should it be? In a way, I wish you'd started with those questions. They would determine how I felt about all the other stuff you should have written. Well, but, uh, yeah. So we still have a fair amount of time tonight. We're going to break out into groups and have a discussion about a, yeah. a variety of aspects of this. And when we come back together, we're hoping we can zero in on that vision question. So once we've had detailed discussions of how all the pieces go together and what we think the opportunities are in Northampton, then it'd be great if you guys can tell us what you, how you think that all fits together and what you, what you want the place to be, both in the general as abstract and the aspirational sense, but also in the details. Other, a couple of other questions. Sure. When you outline, it seems to me that you outline like for the entrance, North King Street, mm -hmm. Pleasant Street, uh, the central business district itself, which is fairly contained and clearly defined. So it doesn't, the, the concept of vitalizing downtown it doesn't preclude different zoning and design criteria for different areas of what's construed generally as the central business area, right? Exactly. So that you could encourage something more interesting on North King. I don't mean not that the central business district is not interesting, because certainly it is. But, you know, uh, in a way to attract people to North King Street, you could do something more that would allow for more flexibility in design, perhaps on that access. Pleasant Street has been, it seems to me, has been design built out to some extent already. And I'm just curious also, as you think about the whole area, to the extent that your access roads, you would hope would invite people in, would create a sense of excitement that they want to come downtown, um, rather than just filling up with gas and going home, then, why is South Street not considered a um, gateway? I'm just curious. Because that's a major thoroughfare in terms of traffic to and from. And, and there is, if you look right at the boundary of Northampton and East Hampton there at O'Neill Street, there's a lot of development that's going on there that may start spreading in either direction. Um, and certainly, the, as you cross the bridge, um, Old South Street, that's mm -hmm. a pretty interesting architectural environment there. Uh, maybe sustaining that and guiding that a little bit so that all of your entrances are vitalized as right. you approach this. Well, that, that's sort of very close to some of the questions we want to talk about in the small oh, groups, right, looking at sorry. the map. Okay. Uh, really trying to attempt to say, you know, if there is a sort of historical core, does that end? Uh, does it matter? Can we sort of shape that and sort of make sure we protect a certain amount or do we have to extend it? And then if there is room for more contemporary approaches to architecture, where would that be? Or where would that fit? Yeah. So you're asking for responses to the questions? Uh, yeah. Certainly okay. appropriate. Uh, 
I like the overlay that you gave. I'm kind of looking at more of a consistent form-based approach and mm -hmm. seeking to essentially expand the downtown or the more historical looking portion of the downtown. Yeah, so we're, we're hoping to have breakout groups till about 8.15, and then have about 15 minutes at the end. Having said that, I would love to see some of the missing teeth go away. Right. You know, the CDS and uh, basis building, it'd be nice, nice if they kind of were brought back up to the semi-consistent skyline, not totally. Right. Well, I guess another one of the questions we want to ask in the map is sort of where are the areas that are most likely to have sort of major development and have sort of opportunities for redevelopment? Obviously, it would, it'd be great to redo the faces building, but as you point out, so expensive, mm. and the rents aren't high enough probably to support a redevelopment of that right now. But if you look at um, the entrance way district, you have the old Honda dealership. Oh, and that's fine. Yeah, that's it's completely different. different. Yeah. Right. You're, you're, I thought we were, on that regard, as we we're talking about right from the heart of right. Main Street and Pleasant. Yeah. Well, that's why it's, you know, we really want to consider these different conditions and sort of think about I mean, what should apply to each one. Yeah. Um, I like the idea. And so I would add to that, I don't know whether there are communities in the country where the requirement is that if you do buy a property, a, a unit for residential, um, to be your primary primary uh, residential space, that you can't have a car or that you're limited to one. Right. You know, are there things that are well, available to us so that we can get that density that we want, um, but while, without adding to the vehicular traffic and adding to parking? Of course, that's another trend we're trying to figure out is what's going to happen with self-driving cars. And are the millennials really going to do without cars in the future? Or are they going to end up on cars like the rest of us when they have two kids? Um, so we don't know. 
Uh, one more comment. Yeah, I have just one more process question. Uh, that the extent to which Northampton's business organization, to the extent that they exist, are involved in this process also, because we've had a lot of a number of empty buildings and a spoleto, old spoleto restaurant that's been mm -hmm. vacant for a number of years. So it seems to me that part of what we need to be thinking about is just that an element of design. So that you know, you said we may not have the rent structure you said to support some more expensive modifications like building up, but we don't seem to have the market to support ground level uh, vacancy fills right now. So um, there's a part of it that you know, when you think about the streetscape, what can be done about that as a design element to also make the caring about what the upper looks like worthwhile to the property right. owner. Yeah. To your, to your first question, we have already met with the Downtown Northampton Association okay. twice, um, including a, the second one was more of a workshop format. And then we also met twice with the Chamber of Commerce and with the Chamber of Commerce Economic Development Committee. So we're, yeah, we're really trying to t tap right. into what they're so thinking. And of course, they raise right. some of the same questions. Is, you know, what happens when more buildings get built without parking. Um, is that going to create problems for existing businesses? What are some of the other things that came up, Billy? A lot of the same things that have come up tonight. Um, so the, the question of vacant storefronts comes up, right? Um, currently, the zoning in all three of these districts essentially requires non-residential space on the first floor, but there are already vacant storefronts in the um, we heard from the business community that retail right now seems like a pretty tough business to be in and a tough business to go in. Um, at the same time as some upper floor downtown residents don't want restaurants on the first floor. So what goes in that space if it's not viable for retail? Restaurants are being um, squeezed out either because of residents' preferences or because of um, building code, the cost of, of complying with building code requirements. Um, so what happens with that ground floor space? Yeah. That's kind of an interesting trend you know, across the Northeast. Is every city wants to have more downtown residents, right? And suddenly they show up, it's great, but then suddenly they start complaining about everything. Not <laughs> any compatible usage. <laughs> right. And so right. it's trying to, it's, and that's really what, uh, I mean, essentially a form-based code is a very detailed uh, prescription for what should happen. And it, it covers a lot more than the traditional zoning code does. And, and so it's better at handling and creating that kind of a balance between residential and commercial. But you do need to have the discussion to figure out what you want. You do need to come up with a vision so you know where you're going. Ah, so one more comment. And I, I just want to say that there, there are two ways I would cut this pie. And one is that certain things that, that are involved here are really permanent changes to the streetscape that once they're there, they're going to stay there. There are other things that are in streetscaping and the sidewalk pavement that are much less permanent. Mm -hmm. um, so those things have a different weight, at least in my mind. Um, the other thing is that one of, if, if you look back at Main Street, the, the existing buildings have served many different purposes. You know, whether it's lawyers' offices on the second floor or fancy apartments. Um, so I, I would want to see something that feels proprietary towards the, the architecture code right. um, that, that preserves the physical character of particularly Main Street um, while accommodating that same level of flexibility for, for use. You know, we did need to get residential use. The commercial comes roaring back when Amazon goes to the <laughs> OK. We're going to count off Dylan. Is that the best? That sounds good. Best way? All right. So this is uh, just like getting chosen for high school teams. <laughs> we're going to count off. We're going to split the three groups. Two of those groups are going to go across the parking lot to the conservation room. 
Anyway, you'll, you'll be guided. You'll be guided towards that a lot. Um, I thank you for your dedication coming here tonight. And I'm probably going to lose some people at this point. But we're going we're to spend about an hour drilling down to some of these questions. And one of the reasons that we want to break into groups is to give each of you a chance to, to weigh in. Uh, and then we'll come back here. If anybody wants to stay uh, beyond 8.30, we'll stay and have a general discussion on this group. So if you don't mind splitting up, one, one. two, no, no, he's, he's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. We, uh, so let's, people are leaving, let's sort of get a sense of how many people are actually planning on staying. Everybody left in the room is planning on staying. I think we might be at two, two groups. groups. <laughs> 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 so two groups? I think two. One here and one over there. Can we keep three groups so that everyone does have a chance to speak? Sure, sure, that's fine. Okay. So, one, two, three. 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 I'll ask you guys to split yourselves among the three groups. Okay. So one will stay here, two and three will go stay across here. the parking lot. Okay. Um, yeah, you should stay here. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Yep. Yep. Right. Questions? Right. Questions? These are your questions. This is your handout. Yeah, what you a, got what a collection.